Lao Tzu puts it in this way, the great Tao flows everywhere, both to the left and to the right. It loves and nourishes all things, but does not lord it over them. And when merits are accomplished, it lays no claim to them. The more, therefore, you relinquish power, trust others, the more powerful you become. But in such a way that instead of having to lie awake nights controlling everything, you do it beautifully by trusting the job to everyone else. They carry it on for you. So you can go to sleep at night, trust your nervous system to wake you up in the morning. You can even tell it, I want to wake up at six o'clock and it will wake you up just like an alarm clock. This seems a sort of paradox to say this, but the principle of unity, of coming to a sense of, of oneness with the whole of the rest of the universe, is not to try to be, obtain power over the rest of the universe. That will only disturb it and uh, antagonize it and make it seem less one with you than ever. The way to become one with the universe is to trust it as another, as you would another, and say, let's see what you're going to do. But in doing that, you see, in saying that to everything else that you have been taught to think is not you, you are also saying it to yourself. Because finally, as I pointed out, you do not know where your decisions They pop up like hiccups. And when you make a decision, people have a great deal of anxiety about making decisions. There's this guy who, a uh, farmer, who ordered a help man to come in. And uh, found he was an extraordinarily efficient worker. It was the first day he put him on sawing logs. And he sawed more logs than anybody had ever sawed. It was fantastic. But it was all done in one day. So the next day he put him on, put him on to mending fences. And there were all kinds of broken fences around the farm. In one day he had the whole thing done. So he thought, what am I going to do with this guy? So he took him down into a basement and said, look, here are all, our, uh, all the potatoes that are coming from this harvest. And I want you to sort them into three groups. Those that we sell, those that we use for seeding, and those that we throw away. So he left him with that. At the end of the day, the laborer came back and said, Well, that's enough, mister. I quit. Oh, he said, You can't quit. I've never had such an excellent weather. I'll raise your salary. I'll do anything to keep you around me. Ah, I said, No. It's all right mending fences and chopping wood, but this potato business is decision after decision after decision after decision. <laughs> <laughs> so when we decide, we're always worrying, did I think this over long enough? Did I take enough data into consideration? And if you think it through, you find you never could take enough data into consideration. The data for a decision in any given situation is infinite. So what you do is, you go through the motions of thinking out what you will do about this. And then when the time comes to act, you make a snap judgment. <laughs> I mean, I'm speaking a little extremely, uh, making some fun of it and uh, so on, because after all, uh, we, we do occasionally get the vague outlines of things and make a right decision on rational grounds. But we fortunately forget the variables that could have interfered with this coming out right. It's amazing how often it works. But warriors are people who think of all the variables beyond their control and what might happen. So then when you make a decision, and it 
work stuff, all right. I think very little of it has much to do with your conscious intent and control. But somehow or other, you are able to decide and control things more harmoniously if you delegate authority. Why, very great businessmen are those who can delegate authority. Trust others to work for them. Because those are people developing businesses on the same basic structure that is fundamental to a living organism. Delegation of authority. It loves and nourishes all things but does not lord it over them. And you see, then what is happening is this. The more you let go of it and trust it, as if it were quite other than you, the more you realize the inseparable identity of self and other. To go back. If you try to find the identity of self and other by subjecting other to self, no go. If on the other hand you, you find it through giving self, that is control, over to other, trusting that, you may make a mistake, you may make a bad gamble, but in the long run you're acting on a principle which has the backing of evil evil. This is the way biological evolution goes on, constant delegation of Obviously, the democracy is superior to the monarchy. Mr. Tocqueville said that democracy is always right, but for the wrong reasons. Because there is operating in a democracy the principle that Buck Mr. Fuller calls synergy. And synergy is the intelligence of a highly complex system, the nature of which is always unknown to the individual members. that goes back again to this point that we're always entering a new environment we don't ever know fully what the new environment is because the only environment we know are the past ones there is always then operating in uh, the development of cellular life on any level a new way of organization higher than any existing and we are not aware of it until after it's happened. If you ever saw, for example, the film Conti, uh, this man figured out a few things as to how to make a balsa wood raft and sail from South America to the Pacific Islands. But once he had set this in motion, he discovered that all sorts of unexpected factors cooperate. That when the wood got wet, it expanded so that the ties bit into it and held it completely secure. He never expected that. And he found that as he sailed along, a flying fish would simply alight flat on the deck every morning for breakfast. That all kinds of natural factors, it was just, he, he, he touched a key where he was flowing with the course of nature and everything cooperated touched the key. It made the act of faith. And he was just picking up, in other words, a practice which had been uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago and followed by others who had worked it out by their great ecological awareness.
so we do come out of this uh, way of thinking to something which has, I, I would say, the most enormously creative and revolutionary social consequences.